and everyone, let's give Rasmus a hand. Thank, thank you very much. Uh, is this okay? Okay, super. Uh, my name is Rasmus. I am a volunteer. I'm one of the founders of the restaurant called Open Stop. I will get into like uh, this environmental food policy way in a more more hands-on uh, way than the previous speakers did. But um, this is my first time doing a presentation about this project, so be gentle and raise your hand if you have any questions uh, on the way. Um, yeah, fire. Okay, some quick facts about the re restaurant open stop. Uh, the proper English translation would be lock, stock and barrel, which pretty much, much means eat it all, um, if you translate the concept, right? We were we asked a guy that lives up of, 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 of a restaurant what, what the English trans translation would be. First hand he said, Rob and stab, uh, but but that's not the concept. Um, we are the first uh, restaurant in Copenhagen to have food waste as the probable per point of the restaurant. The whole concept is built around how can we limit food waste as a restaurant, and how can we help other companies uh, limit food uh, food waste. So how do we do this? Um, first and foremost, we limit our kitchen's own food wa food waste. That's using all that we get we get in. Second. Our, the portions we serve are a bit smaller than usual. That sounds like a really good business idea, right? Um, and it's a brilliant excuse for serving a bit smaller person. All the people that are eating at our restaurant have the chance to get a second filling if they want to. What we want to achieve with this is people only getting what they actually need. Okay? Um, at the same time, people can get uh, fruit from the restaurant back home in doggy bags, of course, as you know from the US. Uh, that's not so common here in Denmark yet, but we're trying to like put it into the market. And the third point, and the single most important point of the restaurant is that as much as possible of the food that we use for cooking is food that would otherwise be thrown out. Okay, so right now we have the goal about 25% of all the food we cook should be made from vegetables and such that was otherwise being dis discarded. Okay, I'll get into that more later if you swap slides. Yeah. Because why, why would you why would you use time on a, a, a restaurant like this? I do this in my free time. I could be watching Champions League football instead. Um, I used to work in the European Parliament with food policy, and some of the we, we had some of the, the, the big reports on on how much food waste there is in in, in Europe. It's, it's really really scary, um, and in Denmark it's a huge problem as well. In Denmark we always like to to believe ourselves to be the green green front runners in almost every part. But in uh, in food and in, uh, in food waste, we're actually one of the worst countries in in, in the Western world. world. Almost 500 tons of food is every year thrown out in Denmark, either uh, from corporations or from the consumers themselves. That's a damn lot. That's uh, I think we translated into 56 Eiffel towers uh, every year in the in the weight. It's it's a huge amount. Um, and food waste is actually the third worst cause of CO2 emissions right now. Um, yeah, and we are, of course, as in everybody, anything else, the Nordic champions in food waste. We throw out, um, I think, 43%. Um, yeah, 43, uh, ah, 42% of, of every day throw out something once, once or twice every week. In Sweden, it's uh, 32, and in Norway, it's even less. It also has something to do with the food prices in Norway, I guess for people who have seen that. Uh, but it's not, I'm not saying that food is cheap in Denmark. Um, the last point is that if we look this in a long time, like uh, development, um, the European continent, if we look at the, the, the food we eat here and the area we live on, we actually, we, we can't produce all the food we eat, the, the European populations in Europe. Europe is simply not big, and big enough because we eat so much meat, for example. So if, if we look on, on where we get all the, the resources from, we actually have, if you take the area of France and add it to the area of Spain, that's the amount of area additional to what Europe already fills that we use for feeding the European population. And when you live in a situation, it's okay, the, the European population is not growing, but the great rest of the world's population is actually growing, growing and they are going to need this space for themselves somehow. Uh, so I, I really, really think that we have to look at the way that we uh, use food in uh, in Europe, and one of one of the things we can do is we can change the the, the things the things we eat, 
Um, I'm, I love meat, so I'm not going to do that. But we can also like make make the the whole food chains more efficient. That's one way of we can keep bacon if we if we make this food chain much more efficient. So that's uh, that's basically our pro uh, project. So how do we do this? Ah, oh, of course we can do the. the but this that, this is the, like the the three, uh, four goals of the the project. Yeah, um, if you take like a kilo of uh, wheat or grains or whatever from from the beginning to the end, um, a third of it, of it is actually wasted through the chain. And that's a lot. Um, that's a lot more than, than it's supposed to be. So what we want to do is we want to limit food waste first and foremost, and we believe that we can. The, the way to do this best is to make every single person reflect upon the food waste. I've worked with food policy for, for so many years and I know there's some very, very good and active politicians doing something about this, but I think we have to change our perspective of food on a fundamental level if we want to do something real, uh, because there's a, it's a very long way from the European Union and down to each consumer and down to each farm. And in the same time, we, we thought it was kind of a, a paradox that we throw out in Denmark um, 56 Eiffel Towers of food uh, every year, and there are some places in the world that actually need food. But how how can we like fix the system so that the resources we have in spas up here gets to help people that is in need uh, every um, somewhere else? Yeah, now we can fire the next slide. Cool. Okay. So, of course, we took our pen and pe pen and paper and we made a plan like this, um, basically. Um, I, I was told that you are you're supposed to learn Danish as well, so yeah. I'll do the translation <laughs> on the way. But this is this is basically how it works, our restaurant, okay? This is Robin Stop, our restaurant in Huset, in Maestrad, close to the city hall. Go there, they, we open uh, almost every night. Um, this is our cook, Irina, uh, she's a girl. Um, this is a supermarket. Supermarket has, they have different kind of, of projects they throw out that could have been eaten. And I'll come into the, the reasons they throw these things out a bit later. We basically have a volunteer or have the supermarket, if they are nice, some are, some are not, bring the supplies food to our kitchen where we have the cook who controls a number of happy volunteers. Look at them, that could be you. Um, <laughs> they make some fantastic meals for our customers. That's also a volunteer, and this is a happy customer. And all the supplies goes to, do you know Retro, Retro uh, a cafe here in Copenhagen? Okay, it's a cafe here in Copenhagen that has, uh, it's like a non-profit cafe that has some, has some projects in Sierra Leone. Well, we are part of that, that project, so our profit goes to them, basically. So in this way, we actually take food waste from the supermarkets, through the kitchen, and help somebody who needs, uh, yeah, give it to somebody who who has a better use of these, these resources, basically. Um, this is a lot of work, to be honest. Uh, and we are a lot of volunteers involved. I think, yeah, we are, we are about 100 people right now. We are uh, 10 people in the, like, the management of the restaurant. And then we are 60 people in the serving team, those heavy guys. And we are like 20 people in the kitchen. And then there's all the other guys. Um, yeah. So, in addition, this is a bit old, a big, uh, a bit old model. In addition to the supermarkets, right now we're actually working with some farms. We are going uh, the day after tomorrow to a place in Odsal where they have the Lammefjordskulder. If everybody, anybody have heard of them? Okay, it's like uh, every country in Europe gets to pick some food that's like their signature uh, food. You have the feta cheese in Greece. You have the 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 Parma ham in Italy. And other places can copy that. You have the champagne in France, for example. Denmark has three things. And one of the things is Lammefjordskulder, which is carrots, basically. Um, yeah, it's, it's fantastic being a thing. Um, we only have three. The Italians have 165. Okay, think about it. Um, anyways, we are going to their farm the day after tomorrow because they have a lot of carrots that are between this size and this size. And some of them are, 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 are ugly looking, basically. And consumers don't want to buy them in the supermarket. So they, they give them to pigs sometimes, other times they're just throwing out the, the milling, I don't know what you call that in English. 
the, the, the garbage, basically. The dumpster. The dumpster. Uh, yeah, there's, it's like a pretty big dumpster, but yes. Um, and they, they, have, they, have, they actually contacted us on her, when they heard about the concept and said, hey, well, we have all these odd-looking vegetables. You might want those. Um, so we're going to take a look at it in the day out tomorrow. So, yeah. Cool. Next slide, please. Okay, so what is this thing about surplus food? Well, to be to take the, the beast by the horns, we are not dumpster diver, divers. That's very, very important because there's a, like a movement here in Copenhagen where people go to dumpsters at supermarkets and see, okay, what can I eat from this and take it back home. Um, we are not a part of that because, first and foremost, it is ethically wrong to serve things that you don't know uh, what has been done to it and it's also illegal. So, what, what uh, the food we use is basically, first and foremost, thing that supermarkets would have thrown out. Um, that could be food very, very close to that best before date. It's not that often. It's usually with vegetables when they begin, begin to look not as nice as the new vegetables, for example. If the bananas has brown spots, for example, or those kind of things. Then it's food in improper packaging. I don't know if that's the right translation because it, it's not in, in proper and like sleazy in any way, but it's um, sometimes you have these tomatoes, for example, that is packed in, uh, eight or ten in one bag. And if one of them gets rotten, the whole bag is basically discarded because they, the supermarket can't sell them and each supermarket can't repackage them because that's done in the central spot. Well, what do the supermarkets do with these bags? Well, they dump them basically. So we actually get some of those rotten tomatoes together with the other nice tomatoes and we, what we do is we take the rotten tomatoes, throw them out and we use the other tomatoes. Um, so that's a part of it. But then there is the food waste because of logistics and that's a pretty big one as well. Um, some of the supermarkets in Copenhagen have to, have to keep a, a very, very uh, small stock and if they can like sell all the, for example, peppers, um, before they have the next delivery, it's sometimes cheaper for them just to dump the peppers, basically, um, because they don't want to give them away. Because if they give the pep peppers away, well, the people that they just gave the food to won't buy any other food. So that's that's a part of the problem as well. Wait, that's a, that's a plant here. Okay. Um, one of the key things about this project is we always take um, safety first, because. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's so important. Um, we have the, what we call food, food chain, uh, chain responsibility, which means that in every course we sell, we have to be you know, We want to be able to sell what's in it and how do we track it all the way back to the to the um, yeah to the place we got it from and where can they track it back? If, if do we, any of you remember the the Polish uh, what raspberry scandal a couple of years ago? Okay. Um, there was some raspberries um, from Poland that some people got sick of, very, very sick. And they weren't able to track in Denmark where the raspberries were from. So in the end they had to tell all the supermarkets all the frozen raspberry ha raspberries had to be destroyed, basically. A huge waste. Also, yeah, it's, it's, it's a shame because you do know if, if everybody had all of them were going to be sick. Okay, the other thing is we are very, very careful about our transport and what kind of uh, goods we accept from where. Um, we don't accept much meat because there's a meat and diary project because there's very very strict laws about how you have to transport these and how you have to be sure that the temperature doesn't rise above a certain level but vegetables and such is, is okay to transport for example in a Christiania bike <clears throat> yeah some of our suppliers we have uh, we, uh, to begin with um, a place called Fødvarebanken helped us open and I'll if anybody here is in Fødvarebank, I want to say a quick thank to them, because without them it, it wouldn't be possible to make the kitchen. Uh, but right now we are, we are getting more and more self-reliant. We have some deals with some supermarket, we have with some farms. Um, we can't get day-to-day -day food from the farms, but what we do is we go once every month after they have harvested a certain kind of bike. After they harvest all the apples and pear, what do we call them? Yes, of course. Um, we, we went out and, and collected those that they, they need, needed to, to get uh, disposed of. Then we have some uh, deals with some specialist shop, shops, mostly in Torre Hallerman. Um, it is hard to get, uh, to get a supermarket one to, to cooperate with us, uh, much harder than we have hoped. 
because um, what we have learned is that for many of the bigger chains, it's profit first, basically. They have to see this we, as we are, we are they have to, we have to present the value in this project for them every time. Um, and we, we can, of course, is a, it, it is a marketing and a CSR value to them, but it is, it is for some of them, they believe, as much as much at risk to cooperate with us because they're afraid that we do something wrong. Um, but Raymond Tusen has had very, very uh, open hands to us. Um, yeah. Next. <laughs> okay, what would stop as an organization? I, I was told this was a career rent, so I'll, I'll went in, uh, go into this real quick. Uh, we are about 100 volunteers organized in six teams. First and foremost, we are the group of coordinators, which is like the board of the organization. OpenStop is, is run half as a, like an enterprise, a private enterprise, and half as a, a collective or some sort of a, a union, I, would, I don't know what you would call it, uh, because it's a social economic uh, enterprise, basically. The, the teams is um, divided into tasks. We have a kitchen team, which cooks. We have, have a serving team, which serves. We have a space team, um, which makes the space look nice, um, and all those kind of things. And uh, the teams are like, the board don't take many decisions. We like more coordinate decisions. So for example, it is the serving team who decides what's going to be sold of uh, beverages as like beer, soda and water and all that. And I, I lobbied for getting a normal Coke into the restaurant for like, since we began. Um, but they have the decision and they don't, they don't want to have it. So that's, that's how the teams work. They're very, very independent and they get to make their own decision. And, that, and that, that, that's one of the reasons I think that we, we can keep many of our volunteers because they actually have a, a quite large fingerprint on the, on the restaurant, each of them. We have a, bill, uh, a budget for like two million uh, kroner in next year. That's, as a young guy like me, that's a terrifying amount. Um, we have no budget for marketing. Uh, we really want to, because we, we give all the profit we have, we give to, to social projects, we don't want to use money on things we don't believe is 100% is necessary. So the, our marketing budget is basically me being here right now, for example, or all, all, all our volunteers telling about the projects to their friends, for example. And that, is, that is the way we do marketing about, about this project. And it has been like, it had, we have found out that it was actually a, a pretty good way to do it, because for the first two months, other volunteers were new, we were new as well, and we couldn't handle so many customers. So by doing this this, this, this way, the project has slowly been, been snowballing. Uh, right now we have full reservations almost every, every day uh, when there's something going on in the place we are, and some days it's a little bit down. So we have to, to, to find out where, where do people hear about our project. Um, so if anybody of you have heard about it before, please tell me afterwards. Um, we have hired a full-time cook and full-time project leader. The cook is responsible for the kitchen and is responsible for, for food safety. Everybody else is a volunteer, is a volunteer um, but we, we cannot, there has to be a, a person in the kitchen that is responsible for, for the way it runs. Um, that's, that's, yeah, that's a sure thing. And the project lead, le leader slash manager is like, um, yeah, she's called Sana, she coordinates all the volunteers when they have to go, to go on shifts she makes sure that there is a full stock in the barn, all those kind of things. Um, yeah, we have been mentioned in more than 300 news articles from BBC to Pokernet, for example, to all, all kinds of, of strange places. Um, we found out that a, a journalist from Ritzau went to our opening party and he made a really, really nice story about the place. Um, and that's like, like, that story has traveled around the world on like word of mouth. So when the, the story got to, I think it was Hong Kong, there was a picture of a guy that was ripping up a trash can and there was a, 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 a headline saying, Danish restaurant make food of trash. And we were called by the BBC and asked, is this even legal in Denmark? And we have to say, well, no, it's not legal, but that's not what we're doing. <laughs> um, so um, every time I go out and, and talk about the project, I have to say we are not dumpster divers. Um, but, there has been a lot of interest in, in our project and, and I'm, I'm really happy for it because half of, half of the, the project is to actually make a surplus for the projects and another half is to make people reflect about food waste. Um, and this is a way of doing it. 
Okay, we are in part of uh, the cultural hotspot who's in my state. How many of you have been there? Yeah. Oh, that's nice to see. The rest of you should go there. Go there. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a place uh, close to the city hall that's a, that, where there's a lot of, of different uh, concerts and theatres and there's a cinema as well. It's a nice place. What we do with the restaurant is that we have made deals with almost every single um, yeah, well, yeah, other organisation that is inside Huset. So for example, if you're going to hear Blue Man play in the music cafe, well, go and eat at our place first because we will serve the food for them before they go on. So, um, and that's the same with the stand-up club. Well, the stand-up comedians come to us and eat first because we supply all the, the food for the, the artists um, and they, they drag along a lot, a lot of their fans. So, um, that's, that, that's when, when you, you do a project like this, uh, you have to think in, well, how can we cooperate with all, almost every kind of organization? from stand-up comedians to the, the big bosses of Arne. Yes, they're very different people. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Two seconds. There's actually one more, more thing I want to say if you, if you go oh, back sorry. here. Now it's, it's me. Um, <clears throat> one of the challenges working with volunteers is uh, volunteers as a workforce is not as stable as a normal, a normal uh, hired guy would be. So we have, um, it's a huge investment actually for us to take in a new guy in the kitchen. First and foremost, um, we give all the people who work in the kitchen uh, like an exam in food, food safety. Uh, first and foremost because it's legally required, uh, but also because it's the right thing to do. And that costs us, I think it's 450 kroner uh, each, and it costs us like six to eight hours to like educate the guy in how to handle food safely. At the same time, we want to keep our volunteers as, as after like three or four months, they're actually working as a very, very good part of the restaurant. And we want to, to get them to stick around because that's when they, when they really provide to the project. And what we do to keep our, our volunteers around is that um, after they have, the longer they've been there, the more responsibility they actually get. So they can like decide the menu, for example, um, if, if the cook is into it. Uh, but they also get like um, be able to to host an event uh, with some of the people who cooperate with. Yes. Okay. What are the positive spin-offs? First and foremost, I work as a volunteer here, and I have a normal job at, at the site. And you should, before you go into a project like this, you should know it's hard as hell. Um, in with it took, we had a meeting every week that took around around three or four hours, and then we like wrote different, uh, uh, like we applied for money different places, all those kind of things to begin with. But right now I, I guess it's around uh, 25 hours a week um, that you use of your free time on a thing like this, if you're in the management. If you are a, a, a normal volunteer, you work uh, six hours um, every week, and you, then you have one week off every fourth week. So you have three, three shifts every month uh, of six hours, usually. But you also get a lot of good stuff with it. You get cheaper food and you get half price of all the concerts in Husa. Um, so, but what are the positive spin-offs? What, what my point was before, if you want to do something like this, you have to have your heart with you. Because otherwise it will feel terrible using so many hours on it. The positive spin-off is that you actually get to make a project like this. It's a fantastic experience uh, to see something grow from, from a strange idea with, on a piece of paper with some coffee on it to actually be a, a full up and running restaurant. That's, that's a huge development and it, it has been very, very rewarding being a part of, of that. <clears throat> you also get to meet a lot of interesting people with all kinds of backgrounds. I think um, around 20%, uh, maybe a bit more of the volunteers in the restaurants are people who live here um, as they, they are students from abroad basically that live here for around uh, one year, maybe two. Um, you also have people from all kinds of backgrounds um, I'm, I'm a political scientist myself, uh, and I work together with, with uh, a cook a lot, and it's very, very uh, interesting to, to see how, how, yeah, you like, <laughs> how different uh, people really are, and I think it's a very, very good thing uh, to, to get around and see, see a uh, different perspective. You also get to meet a lot of, lot of, of uh, strange people when you go and meet, for example, with, with the people from co-op or whatever. It's, you have to always think about, okay, who are these kind of people? What, if we want to cooperate with the co-op, what would they want for us? If we want to cooperate with 
with uh, the Copenhagen Food Collective. Well, what, what are their perspectives on food waste? It's totally different. One of them is focused on project uh, profit and how to change their, their business. And the other is focused like kind of the way we are on uh, some kind of uh, idealistic pro um, project. And you have to be, to be able to think about this mm. all the time. And the last thing is that one of, the, one of the volunteers in the project actually got offered a job uh, through the project, which is fantastic. Uh, she was our, our spokesperson and one of our media. She was the one who got us into BBC, basically. Uh, and she, is, she was offered a job at a, at a television channel as an interview. So that's, that's very nice. That's a way, so basically um, a way to, to see how you can use your skills in another, in another setting. Um, yes. Last page. So, uh, almost last page, maybe. We will see. Where do we go on from here? Uh, first and foremost, the project is still young. I think we have had open for four months now, uh, and there are still a lot of things that we have to change on a like week by week basis. Um, we have to find out a way to, if you if uh, yeah, if you go back to the the one with the the whole uh, yeah the the painting you know, the the picture. Exactly. Um, right now, our cook is responsible for so many things that she's she's going to be destroy, destroyed if she works the same way for about like two or three more months. So, and we we have a lot have a lot of customers now, so we actually have the money to hire an additional cook. So that's that's one of the things we have to to go into, and it's also like it's a very odd experience to have your own company and actually have to go and hire someone. It's a very you, you get to think a lot, about a lot of things when you do that because for us it's like it's make it or break it uh, when we hired uh, the first two people we didn't have the money to like hire a person fire a person and then go hire someone someone else that's a no go so it's it, it is, for a small business like us this is an extremely risky decision um, and that's also of course interesting to be a part of the next thing we want to to work with is. How, to, how, how do we get a bit, big, uh, a bit out of area? Uh, our, our goal is to, to make people reflect about food waste. And we have made a restaurant that focuses on it, and that's fantastic. But we also want to like, get out of the restaurant and reach people that, that is not coming to our house. One of the ways uh, we do that is, of course, through the media. Um, but we also like to, to participate in more events. Um, we are well, we're a part of the Copenhagen Comedy Festival where we had some stand-up comedians that actually got some of the food waste we collected and they made fun of the food while they cooked, for example. And that was a, a great event for, for, for people to reflect upon the food waste because we actually reached, reached a lot more people of that. But we also like, like to visit schools, for example, and do something about that. And we have to think about how can we manage to do that while we run a restaurant. Um, we want to be ready for summer. Um, we have as, as of right now, we only we have like a, a huge courtyard that we have to get ready, and that's a very very practical thing. We had to think about okay, how do we look this nice? So uh, how do we make this place look nice so people want to come and sit here in the summer? Um, yeah, and we want to make more, uh, make this more efficient somehow. It's I think it's uh, when you look at the way the project is are structured, you can see that. That all of us, that not a single person of us is uh, have any kind of background in business, um, and we we really really want uh, someone who, who can like uh, make this more efficient, basically. Because well, we have free labor in the form of volunteers, but we want to use that free labor as efficient as possible as well. Yes, any questions? Can you do it? Sorry. It's, is it expensive at eating? To, to eat there? Yeah. Well, um, a, normal, a normal cost uh, for, for one person would cut, cost, we have like, we have different price levels basically. Uh, one of them will always <laughs> cost around 100 kroner. 100 kroner. Then there will usually be a one, one around 80. And you will have a dessert around uh, 50 or 60. The thing is that we have to change the menu every day depending on what kind of stuff we get in. Uh, we are promised 130 kilos of carrots uh, when we go to London for your school. Owner. So we are already right now looking up, okay, what are we going to make? If you like carrots, come the next two weeks, basically. Um, and that also, has, that also uh, influences the price. 
Well, it's one of the things that 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 is making it a, a great great place to to be a volunteer because I can promise you that it will be there will be a long long time between we make the same course twice, um, but usually around uh, 100 to 120 kroner for the main course, and then there's some cheaper courses as well. If you are a volunteer, you get half price and you get a free meal uh, every time you do a shift and a beer. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Sorry, because I'm Italian. So. <laughs> you don't have to excuse me. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Do you sell any wine? Yes, we do, of okay. course. Uh, we have actually had the... Pimpet. <laughs> I, I should know you would ask that. One of, one of the, the guys uh, who are at Valencia as well, he works as uh, a, he work for Radical Events the Political Party, and he's a, he's a wine specialist as well. So. We have we cooperate with uh, Wienhainen, I think they're called, uh, a, a place at Nørrebro that has some very very good wine. Uh, I don't know much about wines, but but uh, yeah, this should be good. Yeah. Hi. Hey. Um, <clears throat> I'm actually concerned about waste, but then uh, I'm trying to figure out because I heard you mention that you're trying to cut. The, the size of food served to customers. What, what, one more time. You said you're trying to cut the size of food served to customers. Yes. Yeah. So that means we pay for more, we get little. Yeah. Well. Well. Uh, yeah. Uh, basically, yes. Okay, that's First and foremost. Uh, but uh, my second question is, uh, what is the money sent to Sierra Leone used for? Um, Retro runs two projects in uh, Sierra Leone. Um, one of them is called Kono, and it's like they educate teachers down there. Uh, and the other project, I can't remember the name of, but they run uh, a power plant for a hospital. Um, but if you if you look up our, at our website, there's a, a more precise descrip description of the project projects. Uh, to go back to the thing about the, the portion sizes, the, the, the portions you get are a bit smaller than you would, would at our restaurants, but you're allowed to ask for more if you're not uh, stuffed. Okay. So how hungry are you? That's the <laughs> exactly. We we would rather have people ask for more and not waste anything. That we will give big portions and have people leave half of it. That's that's like at the a, a part of the concept. Uh, we also, but um, one of I think one of the the the, the best things that that um, the, the janitor that works in the building told us that there was no more trash when we moved in compared to before when it was empty. And that's really, really nice for us because that, that, that is an indicator that our project actually works. Um, um, okay, I have two questions. Um, first, I wanted to ask, like, um, because obviously you get vegetables and stuff from the supermarkets and yes. from farms, but what about the rest of the food? Do you buy it from supermarkets or because you need like oil, you know, and those things, herbs, yes. spices, so how is it? All the things that we don't get donated, we we, uh, we buy from a place called Herkham. So that's a, a that's a biological biological I think it's called biological ecological, ecological uh, company. But sometimes we get really really strange things, and um, some sometimes if they make excellent menus. Sometimes they're hard to combine combine, and then we have to buy the stuff in to make different things on our menu. For example, we got a lot of um, cottage cheese. Is it called that? A lot of cottage cheese and a lot of um, uh, what are they called? Yeah, we have carrots and, and different kind of, of roots, root vegetables, and we we couldn't make a menu of those things combined. So we had to make two different menus and then buy the rest for both of them. Um, also, as things are right now, uh, we are trying to make a deal with um, a fisherman. <laughs> but right now, all the meat and all the fish that we serve is actually bought because we don't have a, a way to transport it safely yet. Um, but in every course, there is something that is. Donated somehow, um, and and we're working on getting that percentage up as big as possible. Also because it's it's actually good business for us. And just one more question. Yeah. Um, with oh, what did I want to ask? <laughs> oh yeah. Um, with like the food when you make, I mean like now you will get 130 kilos of carrots. Mm -hmm. uh, are you actually making? Um, like the Danish cuisine, or are you doing like international as well, or how is it like? I know the volunteers do that, but like, is it like all around the world, or is it only? Well, that that depends on what we get, what get donated. It it is mostly, I think, 
you know, it, 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 it changes a lot. It could be anything from a curry dish to a traditional Danish dish to whatever. Uh, there's no like, uh, there's no limits on, on that uh, on that front. Hi, uh, thank you for the concept. I think it's very nice. Uh, but I'm just concerned because uh, you have the waste going to you, and then the money you uh, donate to Africa to poor people. So the customer for you right now is the uh, medium rich people who spend money in your restaurant. They go send to expand that and uh, for example serve food for poor people in Denmark. That, that's a very, very good uh, question. Um, we, 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 we could, as a, basically, yes, we, we could change that. So that instead of, of sending the, the money away to Sierra Leone, uh, we, we, uh, we made a uh, yeah, a, a, a internal Danish uh, a so, social uh, restaurant, but we are part of Red Show that runs these projects, and that's why why we support them. Um, we have uh, when we work with Food uh, they they have like a concept where they gather uh, food for for homeless people basically. When we work together with them, we also offer them to like have borrow the restaurant a day for their homeless, for example, those kind of things. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it, 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 that's the way we have, we have to chosen to do it, uh, basically. Yeah. <coughs> One more. Hi, uh, I'm French and I'm very interested in the dessert. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm sensible to the, the previous question also. And I was wondering if you offer a dessert, if we make the plate empty, or if you can offer a coffee in order to involve the people to finish their dishes or to order the food they will eat. I am here so far. Okay, wait, I have to get one more time to. Oh, okay. Maybe, yeah, it will be clear, more clear. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about if you want the people to eat what they take, what they will eat. Yes. You could make like an offer, like um, you make ah, a dessert free or coffee free. Yes, if they eat everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a, a, a fantastic, um, a fantastic idea. What what we have been talking about, we are trying to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Take, take, take the plate. Take the plate and you win a lottery ticket. On. Yeah. <laughs> that could be a number on it. Um, right now we're working on basically that everybody who eats everything gets a big picture taken. Uh, taken. And we'll be working on like a hall of fame uh, for the for the people who, who finish their dishes, basically. Uh, but the other, other thing is a very good idea as well because if they get the coffee, they'll they'll order the set for, for maybe as well. Yeah. But that's a nice one. If anybody else has any ideas, you're more than welcome to email me. Uh, yeah. I think this is all we get to hear for tonight from Rasmus. I think we should give him a very big hand. And uh, you know that uh, you can't leave this room without filling out the form, right? <laughs> Nobody leaves without a form. This is your... You had a ticket when you came, you have a ticket when you leave, okay? 